Okay, last video uh, for this rational or radical, um, oops, simplifying radical expressions and such. And we're gonna focus on, that's not how you spell rational, rational exponents. Now, you guys, I'm assuming in this video that you have done properties of exponents, you know them, the basic properties of exponents, because I'm going to use them to simplify some different types of situations that have rational exponents. So what I mean by that is, oops, let's say that I have, um, we'll start basic. I want to simplify Two, oh, not two, I'm sorry, oopsies. I'm randomly doing this one. <laughs> Nine to the three halves. Now in this form, it might be difficult to do this, obviously, unless you have a calculator, then you just plug it in. But if you're doing it by hand, the way that you rewrite this, if we go back, let me see, where is it? Back up, back up, where you at, where you at? Where you at? Boom. Rational exponents. If I want to convert from a situation that has a fraction in the exponent to a radical, they're basically the same. Then the denominator of the radical, a rational exponent is the index of the radical form. I'm going to use that here. Where the heck did it go? Here. So I'm going to have a radical situation. And the two is the denominator of the rational exponent. So it's going to be the index of the radical. And then that three comes here. So nine to the three halves is the same thing as the square root of nine to the thirds. Now, if you remember, we don't have to wear, wear, we don't have to write the two as the index because when the index is not there or when there's no uh, written number there, it's automatically a square root. So I don't have to do that in this case. Now, I personally, I'm gonna prefer to do it this way. Now, this is kind of like order of operations, pro properties of exponents. The square root of nine to the thirds, I claim, is the same as the square root of nine all to the third power. Now, this is true. Why do I choose to do it this way instead of doing nine to the thirds first and then taking the square root? Personally, I like to deal with smaller numbers if I can. I could do the square root of nine in my head. That is three. And then I could raise that to the third power. Raising three to the third power is much easier for me than doing nine to the third and then trying to figure out the square root of that number. That's just if I'm doing it by hand. I don't have a calculator, right? This is all by hand. Um, what if I have a situation, uh, let's say that looks like this. I have 49 squared. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna like that example the way that it's gonna turn out, so I'm gonna change it. Eight squared to the one third. Now, this is like a play. This is a play on um, order of operations and properties of exponents. I could do this a couple of different ways. If I, I'll just stay consistent with what I did here. But that means that I need to get this into a single exponent first. And right now I have a power of a power, which is a property of exponents that you multiply the exponents when you have that situation, right? Two times one third. So I have eight to the two thirds when I multiply two times one third. So now I'm kind of starting where I started here. So now <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is rewrite this in radical form. So this is an eight with a radical and the denominator of the exponent is the index of the radical, which is cool because eight is a perfect cube. And then the uh, numerator goes here. Now, do I wanna do eight squared and then deal with the cube root? You could do that if you choose. I personally like to decrease the number and then raise it again. So these are the same. Taking the cubed root of eight squared is the same as doing the cubed root first and then squaring that quantity, which to me is a little bit easier because the cubed root of eight is two and then squaring that is four, which you would notice if you did 
eight squared first, and then found the cube root. You know, this is 64 and the cube root of 64 is four. So technically it doesn't matter. It's, it's kind of like preference. Um, do whatever you choose, honestly. I'm just gonna show it this way because this is the way, this is one method that I use, but I'm gonna stay consistent with it so I don't confuse anyone. So I, I like to do this first. Um, can it get uglier? Of course. Of course it can get uglier. Um, let's assume that I have example three. I'm going to do 25 to the one half. To the, let's do it like this. Whatever. The idea that I'm trying to show you here is a negative exponent. So I have 25 to the one half, all raised to the negative three. So power over power, let's bring this together into a single uh, exponent. 25 to the one, th one half times negative three times, right? Power over power multiplication. So is negative three halves. What do I do with a negative exponent? If I have a negative exponent, that tells me that the whole thing comes down to the denominator of a fraction and then I make it positive. A negative exponent does not make the answer negative. It moves the whole thing to the opposite side of the fraction bar. Now I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. I'm gonna have one over, let's convert this. Why does this happen? What the heck? Why does this happen? <laughs> All right. I'm going to convert this into a radical expression. I'm going to make it 25. The denominator of the exponent is going to be the index of the radical, 2, but I don't have to write it because it's automatically square root, and then third. And you can skip this step. I'm just going to show it every time. Instead of doing 25 to the third first and then taking the square root, I'm going to do the square root of 25 first and then take the cubed root. 1 over 5 to the third, which is 1 over 125, and boom, there's my answer. Okay, so, you know, this, this works with, uh, actually, let me do a quick one with a variable. I mean, it makes it even easier if it's a variable. Let's do an x squared y to the third, the quantity to the negative one fifth, I don't know, whatever. So I want to show this because I have a product here, all raised to an exponent. This goes back into properties of exponents. So that exponent will distribute to every term inside because it's a product. If this was plus, that would not happen. But because this is a product, I can multiply this by each of these exponents. So I have x to the negative 2 fifths times y to the negative 3 fifths. Now I'm going uh, to change this because I have negative exponents and they're both negative. So actually they're both gonna to move to the opposite side of the fraction bar. And when I do that, they're gonna become positive. Now it's, you know, it all depends on what you're asked for. If you're not asked to convert this into radical form, then technically you're done. If you want to convert it into radical form, then you can rewrite it as one over the fifth root of x squared times the fifth root of y to the third. And these can't be simplified because the exponent on x is less than the index. So there's not enough to pull out um, of the you know, radical. And same thing with this. So this is the same expression just in radical form and this is in rational form. And just it just depends on what you're asked for, what your preference is or whatever. So you know, I just wanted to show at least one example with, with the variables, which makes it easier because then there's not this extra simplifying part, if that makes sense. So um, hopefully this helps. Let me know. Give me some feedback and good luck.